So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Beautiful day. Have worked myself silly stupid. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna talk about all the things that you could, should, would be doing right now here in the last couple of days of February. If you're anything like us, you're getting teased really bad. <laughs> with the weather, it's 80 degrees, sunny and beautiful. Now that's gonna end by tonight because we're gonna have a bunch of rain. We have days of rain coming. So it's still gonna be kind of mild, but again, I won't complain because I know some of y'all have gotten slammed with a lot of snow. Did I see that in North and South Dakota? You can correct me. So I've stopped for the afternoon. We still have to put up the critters and feed them later, but everything else is done that I'm going to do other than indoor projects. So this is a good time of year to, depending on where you live and what you can do, okay? I get this is not everybody's schedule and whatnots um, are going to vary. But I'm gonna talk about some of the things that I'm doing right now and how I am trying to not overstress myself with everything that I wanna do. Because like I said, I get out there and I'm like, I'm, you just wanna start moving with uh, thinking that it's May 15th and honey, it's not. So what I'm basically doing is I'm going to be doing minimal garden in the gardening in the months of March and April in terms of planting things. Now, like I said in a previous video, I could change my mind. The wind blow, it just depends on how the wind is blowing. Right now, I'm focusing on some raised bed areas for spinach, lettuce, and things like that because... I've had to sort of, we've had to sort of regroup and say, okay, are we going to just go all out gardening and ignore everything else the rest of the season? Because that's what ends up happening half the time. Or are we going to sort of split hairs? And we have decided that for our self-sustainability as much as possible, that for the next couple of weeks, we are going to be focusing more on organizing ourselves, um, going through all the things that we have, um, finishing our greenhouse um, and all of those things. And then we're going to hit it hard in terms of gardening in the month of May. We are not gonna really probably plant much of anything till at least after the first week of May. I'll have to look at the, at, look at the uh, almanac that sort of tells you what you wanna do. That's the signs that I go by, what local folks do and whatnot. But typically nowadays here in East Tennessee, Southeast Tennessee particularly, we even, uh, we don't really go hardcore till almost around, right before Mother's Day or after Mother's Day. You know, that used to be for flowers here because you would plant usually around tax day. Doesn't work anymore around here. Some of you guys that do it and you've had good luck, good on you. I have been around here long enough to know that you can plant something beautiful and think everything is going great the first, second week of April. And then April 27th, hail, tornado, or freeze comes through. So it's kind of like a learn ya darn ya thing. So what we're doing right now, like for example, is I'm seed saving. I'm finishing up, believe it or not, from last year's harvest. I just spilled some of these, look at this. So I'm finding all kinds of things with beautiful seeds in them. I'm still going through um, a lot of my corn. We raised Hickory King last year and I am um, getting a bunch of it ready either for grinding or I'm going to continue to save it for seed saving. I still have Missouri Wonders that I need to shell. So what I'm doing is organizing everything as much as possible because technically we are still in winter. I know, 80 degrees, winter. That's what I say, girlfriend. Hey, you can say hi to everybody. What is this, did I get that on you, honey? So I do wanna put this in as a reminder to you. I filmed and posted a video. It's, I'm pretty sure it's before Christmas. Can't remember. It's been the last two or three months talking to you about a lot of items that you may need on your farm or homestead with your critters that you're going to have to have a prescription written by a vet for come June. So I'm going to attach that video down below, but that's one of the things that I'm doing today. Uh, I've been getting some things along the way. And so what I'm doing is I'm organizing them and I've bought some brand new tubs and I'm going to be putting all of my animal medications away. It's all the basics, syringes, medications like this, sprays and whatnot. And I have found that you can't just, I can't just go and sit it on the shelf in the barn. It gets knocked off. It gets dirty. You don't want them to fluctuate depending on what it is. You don't want them to fluctuate in the temperature situation. Like right now, 80 today could be 20 tomorrow. That's not good for any of that. So 
I just wanted to say this again. This is something that you should be doing right now because right now you are beginning to push push early spring, so you may have to deworm some animals, so especially your goats. Um, and you want to make sure that you have what you need on your homestead so that you don't get pushed up against the deadline in June. And I also want to tell you that along these lines, and I've said this before, if you have not established a relationship with a good vet in your local area, I would be working on that now. Someone that is, uh, that someone that you feel like you can trust. We have found somebody who is awesome, a traveling vet. He's just fantastic. So be thinking about that. This this is something right now that you don't want to wait on. And it, because time is going to get very busy. Time's going to move very fast over the next couple of months, especially as warmer weather moves in for all of us. And you're going to go, oh no, I forgot. I told you. So while my oven is preheating, I'm cooking pork chops for dinner. Pork chop, pork chop, greasy, greasy. We're going to beat you easy, easy. <laughs> Remember that? Remember the good old days. So while my oven is preheating and everything is uh, about ready to uh, start bake a bake a bake -a, here are a couple of the other things that are really good right now. And a lot of you guys know this, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm reminding you. Now, if it's windy, I apologize. It's just what, what we're going through right now. So I would be looking at in February and March, depending on where you live, if you need wood heat for your home, if you're going to be adding wood heat for your home, maybe you already have it like we do. We find, and a, a lot of the folks that um, are really good at this, okay? What I mean is, is who I would trust as far as advisement on wood heat, wood stoves, um, and the, how you want to season this wood, any wood, is it takes about eight months. Now that, you do what you want. Some people chop wood all year long and do whatever they want with their wood stoves, but you really do want really nice seasoned dry wood for your wood stove. Maybe you don't have it yet, but you're gonna be putting one in next year. Well, the month of March is coming upon us really fast, and that's when we find that once we start chopping something down and curing it, we wanna basically start around March because that's going to give us a solid six to eight month window before we actually have to start using those bits and pieces. So if you haven't jumped into that yet, maybe you are just now added a wood stove. You've kind of gotten along with having a little bit of a, or a little bit of that, or you're not sure when to start building that supply up. Basically it could be any time. Yes. But if you really want to start stacking it high, uh, and making sure that you are getting your timeline in, you really want to start around March. The reason I'm standing here is because we're probably going to have to take this one down. I don't think it's made it, and uh, so we're sort of waiting to see if she buds out one more time. I don't think it's going to happen. So again, the month of March, this may be one of the things that we're doing. What about you? So after supper time, oh, it's so bright. The future is so bright, I cannot see you. <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do out here, hopefully later this evening before the rain hits, is I'm simply going to be cleaning out the, the brush. This is where a lot of my uh, pollinator-friendly, attractive flowers are planted. I think that's very important for you to have on your homestead, okay? You need to have that. The very basics. You've got to have the bees come, and pollinators coming around. So this is a good time, a good day to get out, get a little vitamin D. Just clean off the top, okay? And then I'm gonna be taking my mulch because we keep a mulch pile. There's Enoli. So I'm gonna go ahead and start laying it down on top, just a nice little layer, so that when everything starts coming up, I don't have to pull anything, I don't have to disturb anything, because we really want as many of our volunteers, whether it's in this garden up here or down here, to work out for us. Another thing that I'm going to be working on starting tonight, we've already started, is it's a good time to start dumping your compost and your manures and all of those things onto your gardens. These have not been turned, they've just rested. So I've already started pulling a lot of rabbit droppings from my barn. I'm going to be, be dumping it in here. A couple of years ago, I found this garden to be almost dead. The soil, I wasn't impressed. Last year, I let this become a little rabbit field trip compound, okay? Absolutely, I let some of my rabbits come in here and hang out, and they and I even had large cages, but it was on the ground, so they couldn't go outside of the garden. They were protected, um, but they just poopa, poopa, poopa'd. Oh, gosh. 
lot, a lot of poop. And this garden did tremendous. If you can get your hands on some rabbit or goat droppings, now you can use other things too, obviously chicken, cow, but you do, it's good for them to age at least four to six months, right? So if you don't have that, but you know somebody that has some bunny rabbits or some goats, maybe ask for some, some of their droppings. They go straight, and on, straight onto the garden. And I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. So we've started cleaning up, pulling out, um, setting up, just getting some things out of the garden, bringing some things out here to sort of pre-plan and prep for the garden stands. Um, we have not taken down the fencing yet, as you can see. I haven't even pulled down everything off the trellis. Some of this is gonna be burned. So which, this is another good point. Burning ash, leaves, wood, you know, have a nice little bonfire or whatever and start saving those wood ashes. Maybe you're getting it from that wood stove that we were just talking about, we are. And you're gonna wanna put this in the ground as well. I like to keep my wood ash, particularly uh, for when I plant my tomatoes and peppers. I've got ton of, a ton of videos on that. So when you, when you go to plant uh, your starts, your tomato starts, peppers, I do a mix and one of the key components is the wood ash. So like right now, you can't plant, at least in our area, it's way too soon, but this is that type of prep that I'm talking about because when like May 1st hits and you're ready to hit the ground running, it's nice to have things cleaned up. It's nice to have things already mulched. It's nice to have your amendments ready to go. This is just a couple of things just to be thinking about. So when you're ready to get that garden going, you've got it all lined up, girl. So look at this. I know, I mean, we gotta, we gotta mulch it a little bit again, but I want you just to look around right here um, because this is gonna take off at some point and you won't be able to see. So this is my elderberry. So I planted an elderberry start right there. Look how big it is now. And then one down there, same situation. But here's the deal. So that was last year and they have just absolutely taken off. But look here in the ground. So it's expanding. So it's ran its starts under the ground. These are all elderberry. And so <laughs> I guess what I'm gonna do probably is expand, get this cleaned up and expand the rocks around because why would we ever want to waste that? Do you see what I'm saying? But I want you to see, come over here. But this is what they do. They pop up and ex look here, down here. Elderberry galore, galore, galore. So I want you to see this now because it's ugly. <laughs> but it's good to see what things look like at the end of February so that when you come back or I look back at the end of May or into June, that's my favorite time of year, yours too, I'm sure, you're gonna see a big difference in this area. So for the last two years, as I've told you, we have had to allow this area right here to remain completely open because we had to have so much work done to establish, um, re-establish our well. And then we had to have a hand pump installed, right? So they had to come in with these big trucks. So it was silly stupid for us to plant in this area again because it was simply gonna be ran over. So I didn't wanna do that. So we just pushed everything up. And really we took a lot off of this garden. Well, guess what? All of the well water is going great. Everything's going good there. So we're gonna re-establish this area. So it's been resting for over two years. So this is ready to roll. So I'm actually going to come down here. I'm sorry, I know it's bright. Um, so this whole thing is gonna go all the way, almost to the fence, just enough basically so that we can mow in between or Cora can go in between because Cora is my garden watchdog. She comes up, runs the yard, protects everything around here. Don't mess with Cora, okay? Don't mess with Cora. So this is what we're doing. So I'm trying to decide exactly what all I'm going to plant. I am really truly going to stick with the fundamentals this year. And I highly recommend that you plant what you eat, yes, but also plant not only what you like and eat, but what grows really well, because you don't want to waste your time or be disappointed. So it's going to be the typical thing, some squash. I can't go without my cucumbers. Tomatoes, of course, my Missouri Wonders, um, and a few other things here and there, depending upon what I feel like at the time. 
We will see how much corn we get up here at all. I'm testing that to see. We've put away a lot of corn over the last two years, so I feel pretty good about it at this time. So like I said, you have to kind of assess what your goals are and what you're doing, but you also have to keep your mind about it because I know there's a lot of pressure right now with all of us to be as self-sustainable as possible. I know this, I understand. I mean, look at me today. Do I look like I'm worried about? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is, right? But right now is a good time to start while we're anxiously awaiting spring to plan and to remind yourself one day at a time. Get your seeds ready one day. If you want to start your start, start them the next day. Come out and prune one day. I was pruning my roses and my blueberries earlier. Got all that done. So you have to strategize a little bit. And I find that when I get really anxious and I get a little overwhelmed, I do that very easy, very easily. I just have to kind of keep going at it every day. It's just like the whole strategy when we talk about the five cans. If you're overwhelmed with food storage, I'm like, don't overwhelm yourself. Just go get five cans today. And that, in a couple of days, if you have to go back out, get five more. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just stay consistently busy. Every day you're doing a little bit of something. So that's what we're doing. So I'm trimming, we're pruning, um, we're planning what we're gonna do in March and April. And that's what I said. I, I pulled back on doing starts this year because I'm gonna uh, support my local, one of my local high schools again this year. And I'm gonna get what I know that they offer every year. I've cut that back a little bit because see, here's the thing. If, if it's raining, if it's blizzard, if it's cold, <clears throat> right now is a good time for you to go through your pantry. And it's a good time for you to say, okay, I've got 464 quarts of tomatoes. I'm gonna grow some tomatoes because I like them fresh on my fried bologna sandwich with an onion and pickle on it too, please, thank you. But, you know, instead of growing 120 tomato plants this year, maybe I'll just do 16. Enough for me to enjoy fresh salsa and have all these fresh things. I'll put some away, but it takes a little bit of that pressure off because remember what we just said, it's that thing of, oh my gosh, I have 464 quarts of stewed tomatoes. I think I'm doing all right. Are you doing all right? <laughs> So I got, I'm going to ask you a question because I don't have the answer to this. Somebody said that I needed to prune this tree um, because, I mean, clearly what's going to happen is, the fear is, is obviously we're enjoying 80 degree weather today and in, a, in three weeks from now we could be 17 and that's going to have a lot of damage for peaches and blueberries and things like that. We've already endured that before. But this looks like, doesn't that look like to be a lot to have to prune off? And who wants to take those blooms? So I took a little bit off the bottom, just a little bit. But guys, you, you, some of you professionals out there, I don't claim to be a professional peach grower, okay? In fact, most people in Tennessee try to avoid peaches and, well, here I am. So what do you think? Should I just leave her alone and try to cover her? I think that's the route I'm going to go, but I'm going to wait for you to tell me. Another thing that's really good to do right now, depending on what you're doing, some people are having a lot of goat kids born right now. I totally held off. Um, I'm hoping to have some goat kids in the summer uh, or early fall as opposed to right now. I did that completely on purpose. If it doesn't happen for me, then I'm okay with that. I'm also planning to get another livestock guardian dog. I almost bought one two weeks ago and I was really tempted. And then a friend of mine who uh, is going to be breeding uh, their Great Pyrenees again very soon, I've decided to hold off on that. And I had to really struggle with that. Look at her, can you see her? Yeah, she wants to be in the video. I have to, I have to really strategize that because I'm sitting around looking at everything. I want to start doing everything right now. 80 degrees, let's start doing everything right now. No, so I'm not breeding my rabbits just yet. I want to wait until we get a little bit further down the line, a little bit warmer weather more consistently so that I don't have to stress about the kids. I purposely waited to breed my goats. Um, and, um, you know, I did that on purpose because I didn't want baby goats thrown on the ground when it's negative 26 degrees. I held off on that also. Um, so this is what I'm saying. You learn over time how to strategize a little bit better. It's tough because you want to do everything at once, but you also can get so overwhelmed 
Even the best seasoned farmer homesteader, no matter who they are, how old they are, young or old, how many years they've been doing it, it doesn't matter. I can hear them say from time to time, I'm not gonna do that this year. I overwhelmed myself last year. It happens to all of us. So don't feel like, because like with me, because I've had, like I said the other day, I've had people say, why aren't you, start, why aren't you starting up seeds right now? I'm like, because I don't want to. <laughs> because it's one more thing that I'm gonna be doing right now. And is it wonderful? Absolutely. But again, you have to pick and choose and not every season or every year is going to be the same. If this year turns out to be a bumper crop of a load of things for you, praise the Lord. That's a wonderful blessing. Take advantage of that. That means maybe next year you can pull back a little bit and focus and concentrate on something else. That's what I'm talking about. If you had a bumper crop with all those tomatoes and corn and all of that, maybe you're meant to work on something else this year because there's a whole lot more to being self-sustainable than having tomato starts in a greenhouse. That's not what it's all about. It's good, but that's not all of it. Case in point, I have a gajillion Cherokee tans still left. I need to process them. I need to eat them. I need to get this more seeds, seed saved. See, this is what I'm saying. We get ahead of ourselves. Make sure your back stock is very well prepared, organized, and you know what you've got. Make a list. It doesn't have to be fancy. Write down your goals and what you're wanting to do. And don't neglect certain skills because you get anxious to get outside in this beautiful weather. I know. What I mean by that is, is I'm going to be making bread. I don't need to make bread today, but I want to. It's continuing to be rounded out and thinking of all skills. Wood prep. Can I make bread today? Am I going to start seeds? I may or may not. But you know what? I know how. I've got what I need. I've got the seeds. I've got all of the things to to help them be beautiful and the spot for them. Sometimes it's not about going 100 miles an hour proving yourself and everything that needs to be proven to be a homesteader. That's a bunch of hogwash. It's about knowing that you know how. You can teach it like this. You can set it up like this. And more importantly, focus on having options. Focus on having a backup plan all the way from here to Texas and back. Because regardless of what you're growing and regardless of what you're doing, what if something goes wrong? What if something passes? What if something doesn't grow? This is why I always tell you to have a prepared pantry. Even if it's a can of Lux beans. Ain't no shame in the game, girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm gonna make pork chops. Hope you found this uh, at least a little bit helpful. Just trying to talk a lot of people through all the anxiety that a lot of people are having and folks are being anxious, of course. And I get that. I'm right in the, honey, I'm rowing the boat with you. So we have to stop and we have to collect ourselves and be realistic on where are we at in the time of year? What are going to be our goals? How can we set ourselves up for success when the time comes to hit the ground running? It'll be here before we know it. So let's get organized. Guys, like, subscribe, and share. Hope you're doing well out there. Hope the sound and everything worked out outside. It's pretty kind of windy. Beautiful day. Guys, let's bake. Let's eat. We'll see you on the next video.